Hello, welcome to worship. So glad to be able to provide this opportunity to worship God virtually, to connect with him, and have a fresh and new encounter with the living God. As a reminder, we will continue to provide these uh, worship opportunities online uh, each and every uh, Sunday beginning at 10 o'clock a.m., uh, both on uh, Facebook as well as on the church website at marinerumc.org. Uh, they continue to be posted there even uh, after the uh, original broadcast. And so uh, if you wish to worship at a different time, uh, that is entirely up to you. We are worshiping as well in person in the church sanctuary with all social distancing guidelines in place each and every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. And whichever format is best for you and your family, whether it be in person or online, uh, we encourage you to choose that which is best for you during these days. I do have uh, one very important announcement uh, prior to entering into our worship experience today. We have a wonderful opportunity as a church to bless a group of people in our community who have been under uh, extreme measure of extra stress, particularly during this pandemic, and that is our educators. On January 28th, uh, we are going to provide a, a lunch, a meal, uh, for the staff at Springstead High School. It is an early release date. And uh, this is a way that we want to tell them, hey, we're with you. We love you. Thank for all you're doing. We know it is and continues to be a stressful time for you. And thank you that each and every day you show up and uh, you stand in the gap to educate uh, the youth of our community. Uh, many of you know that uh, we have been doing something on a smaller scale for some of the sports teams at the school. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to bless the entire staff. And so this will take place on January 28th. Uh, we will prepare and provide the food right there in the cafeteria at Springstead High School. And there are many ways that you can be involved in this opportunity. Uh, one is certainly to help prepare and serve the meal. Uh, another uh, might be uh, prepare uh, and sign some of the thank you notes that we will be providing for each of the staff. Uh, but the best thing to do uh, would be to contact the church office. Uh, tell us you're interested in helping, and we'll get back to you and find a place that uh, is especially suited uh, for your availability and gifts and talents. Uh, I encourage you to be a part of this. This is a great way to tell a wonderful group of people, we love you, thank you for what you're doing. And so again, I'm, that'll take place on January 28th, and I look forward to our church uh, blessing the staff there at Springstead High School. As now we move to worship, I invite us to read together this historic affirmation of our common faith. Read with me these words. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Tomorrow, January 18th, in our nation we will celebrate uh, the holiday honoring Dr. Martin Luther King and for the work and sacrifices that he and so many others have made to bridge the racial gap that so often divides us, not only in our communities, in our nation, but unfortunately sometimes in our churches as well. In honor of his work for our call to worship today, I would like to, to return to a document that I have shared before. Uh, it is entitled The World Methodist Social Affirmation. I would like this to be our call to worship today as we remember what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ during these turbulent days. Uh, these are words that remind us not only of responsibility, but of the need for us to rise above the fray and to represent reconciliation, to represent love, to represent forgiveness and God's grace, no matter what a person's uh, skin color, no matter what a person's uh, racial preferences might be, uh, no matter what our political preferences might be. And so I invite you to read these words to me uh, today as our call to worship. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough in all responsible use of the earth's resource. We grieve the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith. The exploitation of people because of greed or indifference. The misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life. The search for security by those military or economic forces that threaten human existence and any technology which may endanger the earth and all of us who live upon it. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come on earth as it is in heaven. Most of you know how much I really enjoy taking a portion of our worship time together to do something particularly for our younger worshipers, be it uh, young in age or young in heart. One of my favorite objects, because there's so many different things that it illustrates so well, is something I think most of us are very familiar with, and that is M&Ms. Uh, I love M&Ms, uh, particularly the peanut variety. Uh, I think I love the peanut variety because, uh, well, maybe I feel like there's a little more uh, healthy value to them because there's peanuts and not just candy within them. Uh, but nevertheless, I think we all love M&Ms. And uh, I have a packet of M&Ms with me today. Uh, these do happen to be peanut ones. And uh, I'm going to open the M&Ms. And uh, as we all know, M&Ms come in a variety of colors. Uh, we got uh, blue, uh, we have uh, orange, 
Uh, we have brown. Uh, let's see, what other colors do I have? I have a green one right here as well. Uh, and so M&Ms come in a variety of colors. What's interesting to me though, is um, the M&Ms, it doesn't matter what color they are, they all taste the same. They're just a slightly different color. They're all M&Ms. And you know what? If I eat a green one, mmm, really good. Mm -hmm. If I eat an orange one, mm, tastes pretty much like the green one. In fact, it tastes exactly like the green one. No difference whatsoever. Just different colors. Now I recognize that you may prefer certain colors of M&Ms just because you like the color or whatever reason, but the reality is it really doesn't matter. No matter whether it's a green or a blue or a brown or a yellow or a green M&M, they're all M&Ms. This is a reminder to us that when God created each and every one of us, he created each of us, every one of us in a, in a very unique fashion. And uh, that uniqueness uh, comes through sometimes in our skin color. Uh, it comes through from uh, where we grew up and uh, what language we speak, uh, any number of things. But just like the M&Ms, we're all human. There's really no difference in that sense. God created us all to be equal. God created us to live in community with one another. God created us to love him with all our heart and soul and mind and to love our neighbors as ourselves. This is what it means to be human. And just like the M&Ms, God says, don't let the little individual color differences uh, that are very superficial fool you. They're all alike. And so are we. As we move to a season of prayer, I would like to begin with a few moments of silence to allow you to lift to the Lord uh, those concerns or praise items that might be particular to you or to your family or to some close friends. I would like to follow that up by praying for each and every one of us. And then just prior to praying the Lord's Prayer together, I have another prayer that I'm going to invite us to read together as well. One that uh, I think uh, draws upon the strength of God as we come to grips not only with our own uh, personal feelings about what is happening in our world and in our country and uh, the troubled times we live in, but to, to point us to the strength of God, to be able not rise, not only rise above it, but make a difference in the midst of it. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, thank you for the gift of prayer. Thank you that as we connect through you through prayer, we experience your grace, your mercy, and your strength for daily living. That it is through prayer so often that we find the strength to continue serving you as a disciple of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for that gift of prayer this day. And Lord, <coughs> excuse me, we pray for all this, those this day who are suffering due to health or other circumstances in their lives. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would bring healing, that you would bring healing to souls, that you would bring healing to our bodies, that you would bring healing to our nation, that you would bring healing to our communities. For Father, we are a rather fractured bunch of people, but we know that you are a God who is forgiving and who is reconciling to all who turn to you. And so you are the one that we turn to this day. Grant us wisdom and strength in these days. Father, as we look at the week ahead and we remember that whatever we perceive to be differences amongst us are not things that should get in the way of us living in communities of love together, we pray that the reality of loving our neighbor as ourselves might not just be words. Teach us what that means in everyday life and give us the courage to proceed along those lines, we pray. We pray for our nation and particularly this week for a peaceful trans 
recognition of governmental power. As uh, we approach Inauguration Day, Lord, we pray for peace to prevail and that that peace would be something that you would bless your people with in the days uh, and in the weeks to come. Father, as we reflect upon our own responsibilities in troubled times, we recognize so many times, Lord, we just don't know what to do or where to turn or what our role might be as a disciple. And so together we offer this prayer to you that you might intervene in our lives and point us the way in which we should live and love. Won't you join me in this prayer? Loving and merciful God, we are grateful to be called your children and reminded of our call to be faithful disciples. Help us to share your love and mercy with all whom we meet in these troubled times. Where, unfortunately, greed, deceit, and self-centeredness often have a stronger hold than generosity, honesty, and selflessness. We ask for your guidance as we seek to manifest your presence in this dark world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And then what no doubt is the most powerful prayer in all of Scripture. Let's pray together the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As pastor of, you, of Mariner United Methodist Church, my abundant thanks on behalf of each and every worshiper and each and every person who is a recipient of the grace of God through the various ministries that we offer. These ministries are made possible in part uh, by the tithes and offerings that God's people present to him uh, for the use of the church. One of the ways in which we are seeking to do that blessing is uh, the event on January 28th for the teachers at Springstead High School. I've already given you some information at that. I only bring it up again to let us know that we're doing important work, important work of love, important work of community transformation, important work of taking the message of Jesus Christ to our community in tangible ways. And so uh, I encourage you to do what you've been doing. Continue to be faithful to the Lord with your tithes and offerings. You can uh, either do so through the electronic giving application on the church website at marinerumc.org, mail or bring your offering here to the church. Uh, if the office is not open, there is a drop box conveniently located outside the office doors uh, that securely locks. God bless each and every one of you. God bless each and every giver. Satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransomed will shine, I want a gold one, that silver line. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we will never more wander but walk the streets that are purest gold. Though often tempted, tormented and tested, and like the prophet, my pillow was stone, 
And though I find here no permanent dwelling, I know he'll give me a mansion my own. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we will never more wander but walk the streets that are purest gold. Don't think me poor or deserted or lonely. I'm not discouraged. I'm heaven bound. I'm just a pilgrim in search of a city. I want a mansion, a robe and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we will never more wander but walk on streets that are purest gold. As we now approach Holy Scripture as part of our encounter with God during this worship, I'd like to pray that God would enlighten our minds and hearts according to his truth that uh, we might be able to understand and to apply it appropriately. Almighty God, thank you for your word, Holy Scripture. Thank you for the stories and the teachings that are found in them and the experience of those who wrote these words that we might benefit from uh, their stories that we might benefit from their instruction. To that end, Father, warm our hearts, enlighten our minds to your truth this day. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. We have embarked upon a series of Sunday worship experience uh, uh, themes uh, simply called What's New? Partly that's driven by the fact that we have turned the page from 2020 to 2021, and we fully expect, uh, or at least hope, that uh, 2021 is going to be a far sight better than 2020. Of course, we don't know the answer to that question. Uh, we do know that uh, we now have vaccine or actually vaccines. Uh, we know there's a fair amount of frustration uh, over the fact that uh, it's taking a while to get those appropriately distributed to uh, both uh, those who most need them and eventually to each and every one of us. That's a sign of hope. That's something we can rejoice in. May I suggest for people of faith, it's an answer to prayer. Uh, and so we look forward to 2021 being hopefully better, but we don't know what might be coming our way. I do know this, that uh, when we use the word new, uh, sometimes uh, we like new and sometimes we don't particularly like new. And so the goal of these messages is to help us get comfortable with the fact that God is always doing something new. No matter what the experience might be, no matter what our preferences might be, God is always to some, up to something a little bit different. I think God just wants us to keep on our toes and, and continue to grow our faith. Uh, he's not looking to burst our bubble or force us into something that uh, we really don't want to do. He just wants us to enjoy being a part of his ever-changing uh, way of making a difference. 
uh, through the message of the gospel, our Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the context in which we are approaching these messages. And uh, today's scripture is this. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, but those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us this message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. And we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As I read those words of scripture, I'm reminded that even the Apostle Paul had to remind people who were new to the faith just what newness meant and uh, what newness meant and what it meant to be a part of a new creation, what it meant to be a new creation. You know, those are very um, encouraging words. All things have become new. Uh, most of us recognize that those words uh, give us a sense of hope that who I am today doesn't necessarily have to define who I might be tomorrow. And because of God's new creation that he is doing within my heart and soul by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, I can look forward to growing as a human being, not just in physical stature, uh, but growing a bigger heart, growing in my capacity to forgive, growing in my capacity to, to love others who might be different than me, to learn how to respect other traditions of faith, and on and on we could go. This passage gives me hope that that is really true. And so for just a few moments, may I suggest to you just three facets of what it means to be created anew in Jesus Christ. All of these come from the passage, and I'm sure you could find more on your own, but at least these three I offer you uh, this day, uh, and I trust that um, you might find them uh, helpful and encouraging in your walk with Jesus. The first thing I would like to offer to you that is true of what it means to be a new creature in Jesus Christ is that God gives us a new perspective. God gives us a new perspective. Perspective is a very, very important thing because depending upon our perspective, uh, we make uh, decisions about how we're going to do life based upon our perceptions and perspective. I read a story about a young couple who rented a vacation cottage for one week one summer, and uh, they were both inside the cottage one day, and uh, the husband was looking out uh, the doorway um, uh, of, on one side of the house, looking out the window, actually, and uh, he saw the swimming pool, a number of people enjoying the swimming pool, and he called to his wife and he said, hey, let's change our clothes and, and go get some exercise. His wife, who was uh, finishing uh, washing some dishes at the time, said, you know, sounds good. Uh, I'll meet you in the foyer. Um, and so uh, he quickly uh, changes, puts on his uh, swimming trunks and uh, a t-shirt and uh, proceeds to find his way to the foyer of the home. Uh, his wife shows up shortly thereafter and she's decked out in her tennis outfit. You know why? Because when he said, let's go outside and get some exercise, she happened to be looking out a different window. And the window she was looking out showed a tennis court. Perspective made all the difference in how they prepared to go exercise. Perspective makes a difference for you and me. And God says 
that because of the work of Jesus Christ in our hearts, we've been given an opportunity for a new perspective. He says that we no longer look at people, we no longer look at one another from what he calls a worldly perspective or an earthly perspective. What's a worldly, earthly perspective on other people? Well, there's probably a lot more to it than uh, I have time to share, but may I suggest that perspective tends to be superficial. It's based on external issues such as race, economic standard, gender, uh, status, excuse me, economic status, uh, gender or position. Uh, these are some of the things uh, that uh, influence our perspective. Uh, our perspective can come from a variety of sources. It, can, it certainly comes from our prior experience, how and where we grew up, a number of things. But the point is, until our eyes are opened by virtue of a relationship with Jesus Christ, we tend to get stuck in a particular perspective on other people in particular. A new perspective is that we are all God's children, and both of us, all of us, both need and are eligible for his mercy and grace. The Apostle Paul certainly understood that because during much of his younger years, he hated Christians. He saw them as a threat, and then God literally opened his eyes, changed his heart, changed his mind, gave him a new perspective. One of the ways in which God frees our hearts is to give us a, a fresh and new perspective that's not limited by the particular window that we've placed in front of us and that we are looking through. He expands that. He takes the walls, the windows away, and allows us to see people the way he sees them. I invite each and every one of us to do the same. Secondly, what it means to be a new creature in Christ is not only to have a new perspective, particularly a new perspective on others, but to have a new purpose as well. Like perspective, purpose is a pretty important commodity. Uh, purpose tells us and identifies what our role might be in life. We make career decisions. We make all kinds of decisions based upon what um, our goals are, what our purposes are. I think some of you are familiar with the quote, however, that when you're up to your neck in alligators, it's difficult to keep your mind on the fact that your primary objective is <laughs> to drain the swamp. So often, so often, we are so caught up in uh, fighting off the individual alligators that we lose sight of the bigger picture. And the bigger picture in God's sight is that in a world of sin and darkness, God entrusts us with a message of hope and reconciliation, a message of renewal, a message of peace, a message of justice, a message of forgiveness, all of which are found in a relationship with Jesus Christ that each and every one of us who have experienced that and, and had that encounter with Christ can turn around and offer to other people. Whatever our career, whatever our uh, denominational affiliation or lack thereof, Whatever the case may be, this is a singular purpose that ought to unite all Christians. Uh, we certainly can pursue it in a variety of different ways, a variety of different ministries. Uh, our meal that we're going to be doing for teachers and uh, staff at Springstead High School is just one small way in which we seek to live out our purpose of being ministers of reconciliation of being ministers of love, of being ministers of hope and appreciation and affirmation and all those facets of the gospel because this passage says that God has entrusted that responsibility to you and me. No matter what our uh, vocation might be, our ultimate purpose as disciples of Jesus Christ is to bring that message of reconciliation in many and varied ways to those who so desperately need it. A new perspective, pretty important. A new purpose, important as well. And let me finish with this observation from this passage of Scripture. Not only do we have that new perspective, not only does Christ bring us a new purpose, but he brings us a new pardon. You know, when we think of pardon, we may think about, well, we've stepped in front of somebody at the grocery store, didn't intend to, but it happened, so we say, pardon me. In other words, would you excuse my insensitivity or not being aware of your presence there? 
pretty simple thing, and I'm sure all of us have uh, experienced something like that or a similar encounter. Uh, but in the most part, our understanding of pardon tends to be somewhat uh, superficial in the sense that, uh, you know, we think of pardon of excusing something, but it, it doesn't really do away with the root cause that uh, precipitated the event needed pardoning. Uh, that may also be true uh, all the way up and through uh, presidential pardons, uh, which uh, commute sentences on behalf of those that uh, have appealed uh, to a higher power to uh, remove the sentence that's set before them. These are some examples of pardon in our culture. But the pardon that is offered to us in Jesus Christ is far deeper and far more important and far more transformational. I, I read the story uh, of a London businessman by the name of Lindsay Clegg. Uh, there was a warehouse that he owned that he was selling, and because the warehouse had set empty for, well, quite some time, it was in a pretty, uh, pretty bad way. Uh, it was in a great deal of disrepair. Many of the windows were broken. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of people had put graffiti on its walls. All these things had taken place. And uh, he had a, a potential buyer in mind. And as the potential buyer came to check out the warehouse, uh, he said, you know, um, told the buyer, well, and just so you know, uh, before you take possession of this, I'll make sure we clean the place up, we get rid of the graffiti on the walls, we, we fix the windows, and uh, we uh, do everything to correct and, and, and repair the place so that when you purchase it, it's in, in, it's in a good state and it can be used as a warehouse as you wish. The buyer came back and said something very interesting. He said, you know, forget about the repairs. It's not necessary. He said, because when I buy this place, I'm going to build something completely different. I don't want the building. I want the site. Wow, there's a very important point. You see, God doesn't necessarily look at the externals. He wants the site. He wants us. Because within us, he wants to build something entirely new and different than we would ever expect. My wife happens to be an RN, a nurse, and uh, some of you are familiar with that. And uh, when I have conversations with her about health issues, she sometimes reminds us that it takes a long time to heal from a surgery or a particular disease because the healing needs to happen at a far deeper level than what uh, physically might present itself on the service. It needs to heal at the cellular level, and that takes some time. The pardon that God gives to us is not erase, simply erasing the record or dealing with the consequences. He replaces our human sinful DNA with the DNA of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that his righteousness becomes our righteousness, and God imputes that to us. And on the basis of that, we become God's work in progress God's building site, if you will, in which he creates something entirely new from the ground up. And, and so as you think about what it means to be a new creature in Jesus Christ, I know there are many other ways we could talk about, but at least may I suggest to you that it involves God giving us a new perspective. Uh, it means God giving us a new or renewed purpose, and it means God giving us a very new and different kind of pardon. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the Apostle Paul's words. Thank you for the hope that they bring, that as the people of God, we are a people who are going through, well, we're going through a transforming period of time, and sometimes it's painful, but nevertheless, it gives us the hope that who we are today doesn't necessarily define who we're going to be tomorrow. And who we're going to be tomorrow will be something even greater than we are today. We pray and thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful where the streams of abundance flow blessed be your name blessed be your name when i'm found in the desert place 
Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise when the darkness closes in Lord still I will say blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your glorious name you give and take you give and take away My heart will choose to say Lord, blessed be your name You give and take away You give and take away My heart will choose to say Lord, blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name.